Okay, so with all of that done, that is kind of our policies expectations um, portion of this training. The next thing I'm going to get into is some very, very basic uh, squad leadership stuff. And what I want to do actually to do that is let's take... Um, Yeah, we can just do it right here, actually. Let's follow oh, me, everybody. We're just going to go kind of down the uh, the ramp here so we can get away from, from all the blasting and stuff. Oh, sorry. I'm blowing shit up. Alright, so I'm going to be talking about this mostly from the squad lead's perspective um, rather than the platoon lead for uh, one crucial reason, and that's that everything that you do as a squad leader will apply to being a platoon lead. Using this information, you can apply it to yourself when you're a squad lead. Um, you know, it's, it's not all the, the strategy and stuff that the platoon lead might be thinking about, but you will have a functional, cohesive um, squad much more easily uh, by doing this. And the very first one I want to talk about is the beacon. Beacons are so amazing. Um, they are the tools that get all of your squad together. Um, if anyone isn't sure how they work or has never had the pleasure of placing one for your squad, um, definitely try it out. When you're in a squad or platoon, you'll see um, it'll be in one of your weapon slots or your tool slots. Um, and you can place that down or sorry, I should I said so you can put it up. It's up, not down. So that okay, I'll get into that in a second actually. Um, but you can place it anywhere on the ground, on a rooftop, anywhere that's open to the sky is where you can place that. And it just brings, or it has the capability rather of bringing your whole squad um, down on it from drop pods. And so what's really nice is you can go to a base that you want them to go to, place the beacon, and say, hey guys, beacons up. You know, join us here. This is where we want to be. Um, and they'll have that option. You don't need to worry about sunders or anything like that. You have a spawn option in your pocket that you can give to them. Now, unfortunately, I spawned in, into VR training um, before I opened up the platoon, so I'm currently not holding a beacon. Uh, Cause I'm a black dragon. I think you guys might have one. Uh, you can't deploy beacons inside of uh, VR training. No, I know no. that was a complication. But yeah, it's but I have one in my hand. Does that help? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we've got beacons around. I want you guys all to get used to pressing that beacon button because it's going to come in very, very much in handy when you guys are playing in squads and platoons. And that kind of leads into the next thing, which is grouping up. In Planet Side, we have a lot of different tactics. We have a lot of strategies, but the main one is always going to be our our force at any given point. Right? We might be going to a 12-24 fight, we might going, be going to a 48-96 fight, but what's really going to matter is where our forces are within that fight. So for example, if right here, say we have a spawn point behind us, a sunder, a beacon, I don't know, something, and I just say, okay, we're all just going to go and start running towards the stairs, let's go. You know, and we start running, and we go one at a time, like this, I start running up, and okay, so now I'm dead, they shot me, and the next guy goes up and he's dead, and by the time everybody gets here, it's just the last person, you know, that's, that's kind of lying, it's like, guys, where'd you go, right? So we don't want to do that, we want to encourage our squad to go all together, because it's so much better going all together, the, the opponent will have to shoot way too many targets, um, and you'll have a much better chance of actually getting into the point room which I will say for the moment is on Platoon Waypoint. So I'm going to kind of give a, a live demonstration exa of exactly what I'm talking about. So if everybody wants to kind of come back to, to where we are for a moment, or where we started. And I'm just going to kind of give some some simple call-outs um, as, as to um, how I like to, to uh, encourage my squads, my platoons, to get to where we need to go. Um, I'll be calling out things just, just for the sake of live demonstration, and I might call out, you know, there's fire coming from there or stuff like that, but it's, you know, don't worry, but it's not actually there. So, okay, here we go. Platoon waypoint is the point room. We've got a, we actually do have a sender behind us. That's awesome. 
awesome prop. So we're gonna get started here, guys. We're gonna start going to the left from our spawn room. From the left, we're gonna go around, take this cover, buddy. Follow me. Let's go. Let's go. It's important that we stay grouped up. We've got car coming from our east side, so don't stop running. Don't stop running. We need to actually get to the point room before we stop. Here we go. Okay, we're at the stairs. Make sure everybody's grouped up. Grouped up. We're under fire. Get out those snipers if you can. We're all here. Everybody at the stairs. Everybody at the stairs. Once again, don't stop. Don't start shooting until you actually get to the point room. Don't start shooting until you get to the point room. There we go. And here we are. We're at the point room. We're all together. Anyone who's died on the way, our medics can pick them up. We will have picked them up. Engineers can start throwing out your ammo packs. And we are all set and the enemy didn't know what hit them. Far better to arrive all together than one at a time. Alright, thank you, buddy. You can cut the fire now. Um, so what I want to really get across there is that it's the constant communication because if, if it's it's the importance of the communication as well comes across in your voice um, and I'm not going to go too too deep on that but the the point that I, I really wanted to make there again is just if you don't talk at all if you simply say all right guys blue team waypoint there go well you know you'll have people go in there but without telling them how without telling them who's going where and, and, and why, everyone's going to be confused and, you know, they'll all be there and they'll all be, you know, shooting things, but you won't have that, that nice tight cohesion um, that's actually going to get you the victory. So if nothing else, um, I would practice using those beacons, right? Those are going to be the first things. You fly to a new base with a Scythe or you drive over there to Sunder, most likely, especially if you're just starting out, um, you're going to have a hard time getting everybody to, to the same base all at once. And that's where the beacon comes in. It's, it's a specific thing. Most people will know about it if they're very new players. Like I said, if you're running mentor squads or something like that, um, they might not, and you can explain it then. But as soon as they all know what it is, you can place that beacon and say, hey, everybody, we're at this new base at, you know, platoon waypoint or, or squad waypoint or whatever. Um, and the beacon is up. Everybody hop in. Um, and that'll be for your squad specifically. So if you do have a platoon, um, you'll also want to make sure that your your other squad that's up is also placing their beacon. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, cool. We do have a second, um, or we do have a full platoon. I'm actually almost done here, so I'm going to keep it just like this, um, just for now, actually. Um, yeah, so that's basically it, guys, as, as far as getting your squads together, keeping them cohesive. Um, it's really just, I want you guys to go here, and I am going there. That, that was honestly one of the first things that really helped me, was not just saying, okay, everybody go there. The, the, the important part was, everybody, I am going here. And that, that right there tells everybody that you, you want them to follow, um, and everybody has the same idea, instead of just, okay, so when are people going? The fact that you're saying, I'm going there, indicates you want them to go now, um, and that you want everybody there at the same time. And, and it's really, really nice. So I hope that was really, really helpful. Um, hope you learned something. If anybody has any questions, feel free. Um, hoping uh, Osher opens up really soon. That's really, really exciting. I can't wait. Um, I'm definitely going to be uh, on the PTS and testing things out. Um, Eskel is going to try and have a, a couple of platoons up. Uh, Friday, Saturday, might be... One of the two. One of the two. You'll see on our Discord again. We have that outlined. Um, and you guys can feel free to join that as well. The idea is we're just trying to, to kind of do a stress test on the server, help out the devs, try to make the content as best it can be uh, when it releases for us. So yeah, if anybody has any questions now, uh, feel free. Otherwise, that's it. Um, and yeah, I hope that helped. I have a question. The, um, the test server was for the 13th, wasn't it? That's today, is it? Yeah, so it should be opening up sometime either uh, today or tomorrow. Um, well, sh yeah, it should be opening up today. It might be a little bit later. We'll see. Um, but SCAL will actually be doing an organized platoon, uh, like I said, either either late tomorrow or Saturday. I forget which one. What's the requirement for us to unlock anvils? Uh, so anvils... Sorry, guys. I can just get just uh, uh, stop shooting for a second. Um, so anvils are outfit resources, and that's going to mean that you need to be, uh, within SKL, 
you need to have um, permissions for that. And those permissions that are unlocked there are our broodlords. Those are the entry leadership. You apply through our Discord form. Um, we look it over, um, and you you might get uh, the broodlord rank, which does give you access to the armory. Though do keep in mind the armory um, in a scale is a tool. It's not the reason we give a broodlord. Broodlord is specifically for learning leadership um, and diving deep into all of that, where the armory is a tool. So as far as just getting the armory goes. Um, it's, uh, it's not something that SKL is able to give. We've, we've looked at that several times as, as far as doing other ranks and stuff like that, but um, game limitations makes it so that we can, we can only have the armory um, in, in any kind of uh, cohesive way uh, just for the officers, if that makes sense. Alright, thanks. Anyone else, feel free. Hey, I'm not in SKL, but um, I caught the end of your lecture here, and it, it seemed really interesting. Could you start over from the beginning? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure this was recorded at some point. In all honesty, yeah, you had some good points in there, see. for sure, uh, about keeping your squad cohesive. And uh, it sounded like it was more geared toward people who would lead squads, um, which is great. And uh, obviously, people who follow leaders uh, is... Yeah, it's good information for them, too, because they know, like, what is your cue? When do I start leading? Where, or when do I start following this person? Where are they going? Um, yeah, it was really interesting, and, uh, yeah, it's just a comment, really. Um, if you could start over from the beginning, though, I would appreciate it. Okay. Um, so you can, join, you can join our Discord, too, and see all these videos. We have a bunch of resources for leaders and, you know, people that like armor. We have all these different things, so you're, you're always welcome to join the Discord, even if you're not in SKL, so feel free. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm Great, not going to restart. That. I'm not going to restart. That was uh, an hour. <laughs> I didn't get to no, I know. Um, but yeah, no, I really, really appreciate that. Hear, hearing that kind of comment from another outfit means a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, boss. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, SKL, one of the things that we highly promote is is the players across the game as an entirety. So, you know, we have a lot of people from other outfits, other factions even, that will switch to, to VS when we have some trainings going on, and they'll just join in just to hang out and see, you know, what's going on, and, and they take it back to their own outfits and factions and, and try and implement some of the things that we talk about here. We don't, you know, we don't keep it locked down. It's big SKL secret or anything like that. We want to encourage the game as a whole. So definitely you're welcome to join the Discord and come to any of our open trainings like this and... and pick things up and, and take them back to your own outfit and whatever works for you works. Yeah, well said. Alright, thanks Kasumi. I like your head, Shadow. My thanks. Thank you. I suppose the only question that I've kind of come across recently is um, there seems to be a uh, a disconnect with certain platoon leaders and squad leaders about how much delineation should be left to individual squads versus platoon lead. Um, so, like, you'll have certain people that are micromanaging, roughly, but everyone in the platoon should be doing, and it kind of causes confusion. Um, how should we go about best kind of combating that sort of micromanaging within our own squad to make us a little bit more efficient? Whether it be, like, Gal dropping at the right time if you're all in separate gals or something like that. Okay. Generally, SKL promotes public platoon leading, which means we're going to get a lot of people that aren't, you know, going to be top of the line, know every play and how to do everything perfectly. Um, but generally, we live under the rule, per se, that platoon lead is, is boss. They get final word, final word in the platoon. You can offer suggestions, but their word is final. As a squad lead, the best squad leads are there to support the platoon to support the platoon leader and get things done for him or her. So, you know, we encourage our platoon leaders to, when the time is right, split squads. You know, Bravo, can you go defend that base while the rest of us go take this base, things like that. But we aren't really about micromanaging, you know, fire teams and your squad needs to be built like this. And we, we don't, you know, we don't want to see squad leads quote unquote stealing squads and just deciding, well, I'm going to go off and do this with my squad. I don't like what the platoon leader's doing. As a squad lead, we expect you to be supportive of the platoon and of the platoon leader. 
and like Cora said earlier, if you don't like it, frankly, you can leave. That's your option. But we want you to stay and support what's going on and further what the platoon lead wants to get done. Sure. Yeah, as far as, you know, how, how you kind of help with that, if you're leading a squad, um, and like Asami said, if the platoon lead is, is kind of handling um, what your squad is doing, because it depends it depends on who is the platoon lead, right, and who are the squad leads as well. Um, but, you know, I know some platoon leads, and, and they like to kind of run um, all the squads as, as one large force, and, and that's their style of platoon leading. Others will kind of see if they have um, reliable squad leads, and they'll depend more on them to, to you know, keep their squads cohesive and stuff. Um, so it really depends on that there, but like I saw, I said, if the platoon lead is kind of doing something, um, support that. You as the squad lead, if, if your platoon lead is, is, is kind of handling a lot of the, the micromanagement um, of the squad that you're uh, leading, the best things that you can do to support that is first, like we talked about, the beacons. Um, platoon lead can't do that for you, that's your job to make sure it's always up and ready um, for your squad to go at the appropriate locations. If the platoon lead um, ask specifically for galaxy drops, then it's your job to make sure that your squad at least has a galaxy, or you know, pull one yourself as a squad lead um, to get where to where you need to go. And if the platoon lead doesn't say um, any particular way, either a uh, make the best call if that's what the situation you know it needs, or ask. There's you know there's nothing wrong with asking the platoon lead what what they need from you as well. Uh, and that actually reminds me, for some reason, of the point I was going to make about the up and down beacons. So, the, there's obviously a double negative sometimes that happens with down, where a beacon can be placed down, you put it down, or it can be down as in dead or destroyed. Um, so one thing you'll you'll often hear in SKL platoons is that beacons are up, um, and that's just kind of our, our, our call for it being alive or replaced, and then down is just always destroyed. Um, sometimes there's, there's still mix-ups and, and stuff, but uh, it, it definitely helps to, to keep confusion away by a lot. Yeah, it's up, down, not down. <laughs> pull out your fingernails if you say a beacon is down when you place it. Oh my. I just remember it was up time, down time. What's, uh, what's best practice for, like, general comms? Like, you know, been in quite a few platoons, some are quieter than others, some it's just like, it seems like 48 people shouting over each other on, like, different orders and stuff, and, like, what would you do in order to kind of get things, like, grounded a bit to reduce some of that, like, unnecessary noise? Good question. Um, so I'm assuming you're asking as, as the squad leader, as the platoon lead, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, in a, in yeah. a role of leadership. Okay. Um, so there's another call that Platoon or that SKL likes to use, and that's clear comms. You know, it's pretty common. Um, anytime you need to cut through a lot of chatter, just clear comms. It's you know just expecting everybody to quiet down for a bit if there's a lot of idle chatter, like I was talking about, and then start saying what you need to say. And if people are you know continuing to do that because you know people like to socialize when they're actually talking, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you are trying to run a more tight knit uh, platoon or squad, and you're and you're going for the alert or doing, you know, something that's that's otherwise um, requiring a lot more cohesion that that doesn't have a lot of room for, for just idle chatter, um, it's again making that known to your platoon. Just hey guys, I am trying to run something a bit more tight knit here. I want some more cohesion. I know you guys want to talk, but you know, right now um, I want us to be more cohesive, less idle chatter. Um, so it's just setting the expectations of, of your platoon or of your squad. Um, it kind of leads into one other practice, which if people are causing issues, and you know, um, doesn't happen often, of course, but if you get someone who's like, well, I'm not going to be quiet and I want to talk, kick them. It's, there's, 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 that's a whole other topic of, of when to kick and, and when to try and like, you know, talk it out and stuff like that. But if they're really causing a problem and you set your expectations and everything's, you know, your, your boundaries are straight and they're still not listening, kick them. It's it's far better to get rid of someone who who is causing issues for the platoon and isn't willing to um, cooperate than to leave them in there um, and continue to drive away cohesion, continue to drive away your players by, by just being rude. Your contribution is appreciated. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no, so like Horace said, set your expectations with your platoon or squad. Um, a lot of idle chatter tends to happen when there's a lot of silence. 
you as a platoon leader, you as a squad leader, you are content creators for the people working under you. So the more you're talking and teaching and, and guiding, you know, you don't have to talk constantly, but be very communicative with them. And then they'll take that attitude from you and tend to, to follow that. But if it's just silent, you, nobody's heard anything from you in five minutes, you're just placing down waypoints and people are just kind of going, there's going to be idle chatter. People are going to start talking about their favorite guns and why they like this loadout and the mag rider. And then when you do try and say something, you aren't going to be heard. So you have to... You have to be you have to outright control the comms and you have to behind the scenes control the comms too by running the platoon running the communications running everything there you are in charge of that so you don't have to be rude about it but set your expectations but you need to follow through with those expectations as well cool and sorry last question what what, what would you say is like some common missteps that squad leaders and new platoon leaders get themselves into like what kind of you know, on your feedbacks that, that are given after a squad, like, what do you see that are kind of directed at, like, hey, we'd like to see this done better, or the PL, or, you know, squadly didn't do this right? So, um, yeah. Everything under the sun has been complained about. Um, it's, you know, as a newer leader, you're, you're going to make mistakes. As an older leader, you're going to make mistakes. They're just, they're out there. But so much of this game, the nuances of it come with experience. That's that's all that teaches you is experience. Okay, I tried this, it didn't work. I tried this, it did work. Hey, you know, the light bulb goes off in your head. But, I mean, it, it it's everything. There's Everything is complained about all the time. It's just, it is what it is. You know, you're all going to have your favorite leaders, and you're going to get with other people that are going to do something you don't like, and so you're going to file a report. And, you know, that's up to us in the Officer Academy to decide if this is something that we want to have a conversation about, want to address. Sometimes it comes down to addressing things in trainings like this that we've seen you know, certain behaviors being repeated again and again. We feel like we need to do a blanket training, but everything gets complained about. Everything gets complained about. So there's nothing in particular that is complained about more often. I, I, I'm sure there's people like, I didn't like that guy's voice. He sounded like an idiot. Um, but is there particular things that have, uh, are, are reoccurring more often than not? So, yeah, so it's, it's not that there's not particular things, but there's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, and a lot of it isn't even, you know, the, the lead's fault, um, whoever is running the platoon or squad. There's just a lot of stuff going on, like Asami said, and, and things go wrong, and, and sometimes, you know, the, the lead can be doing everything right, um, and people will still complain. You know, things just happen like that sometimes, um, and, and you just kind of learn to roll with it. I think if I, if I had to give someone um, one tip on, on kind of avoiding a lot of that is owning your squad. Be confident. It's, it's like Asami said, like we're, we're content creators here. We're giving people an experience um, that they can't get if someone doesn't step up and take leadership. And that right there is also why it's so important to support your, your, your these guys, people who are in those roles. Because it's, you know, it's not just a walk in the park doing this stuff. It, it takes confidence, like I said, it takes a lot of effort. Um, so really give them support that they need. Um, and you yourself, if you're a lead, have that confidence. Know that, you know, especially if you're in a scale and you're a brood lord or hive lord or any rank, really, you have a whole team that's that's behind you and, and supporting you whether things go right or things go wrong. Um, so the, the, the side of that that doesn't look as good is kind of like I was saying before, where we were um, over by platoon waypoint over there and we were kind of running up here, like I said. And, and I kind of just threw the platoon waypoint over and, and you know, as, as my kind of bad example and, and kind of did a, a, a demonstration, you know, we just walked up one by one and, and theoretically got killed. Um, and that's, that, that's kind of a, a um, not as great only because you're not owning your squad there. You're not taking full control of it. You're expecting um, a lot from, from your people to kind of figure it out by themselves. Um, as long as you are directing your squad of platoon to, to do things, as long as you're taking control, as long as you're showing that you're the person who's leading them, you're, you're hardly going to have any problems, um, you know, as, as long as you're not doing it on purpose. Very cool.